Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today I'm just going to give you not a comprehensive discussion. I already have one on my channel if you look earlier on. But a, but a few thoughts and a little bit more detail about vitamin D3 cholecalciferol. Such an important thing. So many people are taking this. So many people are deficient. And I'm just going to give you a few little aha moments, a few thoughts from my perspective as a practitioner. And, and we'll explore some of this, but not all of the details. There's a big background story to vitamin D earlier on my channel. If you search it at, uh, on YouTube, Carb Addiction Doc, uh, you can look at the more detailed channel. It dropped about two years ago. However, I'm kind of pissed off <laughs> in this regard because I just got a, a rude uh, letter from one of the big insurance companies saying, you are in the 95th percentile of people ordering D3, uh, D tests, D blood tests, and you're ordering too many and we should. It just pisses me off so much that insurance companies regulate or try to regulate what I as a doctor am doing. So here are the facts. Yes, I order D levels, vitamin D3 levels on almost all of my patients when I do blood work and I am blood work intensive. So they are correct. I am way out there in terms of ordering vitamin D levels. So the question is, why do I do it? First of all, I work in a world of insulin resistance, and we're going to talk about this in a second, but insulin resistance is the primary cause of D3 abnormalities, vitamin D abnormalities. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. However, the second thing is this, by far, by far, by far, the single most important abnormal number in all the blood work that we do, are vitamin D levels. And vitamin D is so important as a primary vitamin to assist in so many parts of our metabolic function. And by far the most common vitamin supplement that my patients are taking is a vitamin D supplement. So of course we should be looking at these numbers. And most often, that is the number that can easily be corrected by me, by recommendation to say, hey, your number is low, take this medication. And it is even more important as we in the Northern Hemisphere are starting to go through winter, where we don't get out in the sun as much, we don't get as much sunlight, the UV light is slightly down, and that UV light is essential to the conversion, the creation of vitamin D in our skin from ultraviolet, from sun, from sunlight. So particularly at this time, I would tell you out there, it is essential, it is important to know what your vitamin D level is. And if you're interested in finding out, come to me because I'm going to continue to order it because we treat it and we see the deficiencies. And the insurance companies, if they want to tell me not to order it, they've got to understand that they are forcing me to practice less good health care to save them money. So I'm happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them because my, my data shows that this D3 level is the most challenging one uh, in terms of being abnormal in the majority of people, and most people don't know that. And if they know what the number is, we can then track that number as we supplement. So let's talk a little bit more about D3. By the way, uh, if you find value to this discussion, Please, for the benefit of myself, James behind the camera, and for the number of people we reach, hit the like button. And if you, uh, if you want to leave a comment down below, even if it's, hey, how are you? Or whatever that comment is, good or bad, please leave a comment down below. It helps us tremendously. Um, however, let's talk a little bit in more detail about D. First of all, what does vitamin D do? Well, in fact, it's interesting that the word vitamin D is actually a misnomer. D is actually a steroid hormone. A steroid hormone. Now, what are steroid hormones? The classic steroid hormones that all of you are going to know about is testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, uh, cortisol, a number of the adrenal hormones, all the steroid hormones. Those are all steroid hormones. And what defines steroid hormones, they all have as a common precursor that the starting molecule for all steroid hormones is cholesterol. Yes, that thing that your, your, your doctor, oh my God, your cholesterols are so high, you shouldn't have the bodies producing cholesterol. Cholesterol is an essential, essential product in the human body, and it is a precursor for all of the steroid hormones which govern the majority of, of our metabolism. So 
Vitamin D3, vitamin D is a steroid hormone that through a series of enzyme changes, enzymes change the structure of certain molecules. So we go from cholesterol down the pathway toward uh, vitamin D or toward cholecalciferol, cholecalciferol, cholesterol. See, the, see how the nomenclature is very similar? The other name for vitamin D is cholecalciferol. Okay, cholecalciferol, cholesterol. So you can see how, how the biochemistry works. And so we go from, from cholesterol down a series of pathways toward vitamin D. And the first place of production is in the skin. And one of the big influencers, the rate limiting step of the production of vitamin D is a hormone called insulin. Insulin is a regulator of steroid hormone production whether that's testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, cortisol, vitamin D. And if you're having that aha moment now, if you're insulin resistant, then those hormonal pathways are always going to be broken to a certain degree. So if you're female and you have high levels of insulin, you're probably going to produce more testosterone, less progesterone and estrogen. If you're male and you're producing a lot of, test of, of insulin, you're hyperinsulinemic, you're probably going to have low vitamin D, uh, uh, low um, testosterone levels. Your cortisol levels are going to be elevated if you're insulin resistant. So well, I'm always cortisol, 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 fatigue, all of those things are part of the regulation of the steroid hormone production pathway. And so is vitamin D. So it is natural that in the people that I see, all the insulin resistant people and people that are obese and diabetic cannot be obese or to have type 2 diabetes without being insulin resistant. People that are obese, people that are, have type 2 diabetes cannot have those diseases without going through the eye of the needle of insulin resistance that affects other pathways. They cannot therefore have abnormal vitamin D function and have hyperinsulinemia. The two go hand in hand. So that's why I do so much testing. But now in the sun, under the influence of ultraviolet light, which changes the chemical structure of vitamin D3, we produce that vitamin D3 regulated by insulin and then that vitamin D gets absorbed into the bloodstream and goes to um, the liver first where another change happens and then to the kidneys. So you get D2 and then uh, you get a change in the kidneys. So three organs are involved, skin, liver and kidneys to to create the active form of vitamin D. So all of those transport of vitamin D has to happen. Now, while vitamin D is created under the influence of insulin, just like cholesterol is, there's also absorption from the gut. And this is important to understand whether you're taking vitamin D as a supplement or you're getting vitamin D in your food. What are the foods that are rich in vitamin D? Fish, especially the small fish, the whole fish, the sardines, the harders, the, um, uh, the, the small fish, the anchovies, and then the shellfish, the oysters, the mussels, the shrimp. Very, very high in vitamin D. Dairy products, especially the, the higher fat dairy products, very high in vitamin D levels. Eggs have an excellent, are an excellent source of vitamin D. Some of the leafy green vegetables, the spinaches, but also mushrooms have a high level of vitamin D. So those are healthy foods to eat as part of our diet in terms of enriching ourselves with vitamin D. But here's the thing. Vitamins A, D, E, K. A, D, E, K, essential vitamins in the human body, are fat-soluble vitamins. So they have to be absorbed into a bile micelle. They have to be absorbed with fatty food. So please don't take your vitamin D in the morning if you're OMAD. Put your vitamin D uh, a little bottle, if you're supplementing with it, put it on the table and take that vitamin D with a high-fat meal. Because the vitamin D gets, ab gets absorbed by the intestine into a biomicelle and then into chylomicron, which is the big long chain fatty acid transporting uh, lipoprotein, just like LDL, that gets produced in the gut, goes into the lymphatics, and then doesn't go to the liver. Does not go to the liver. Most of the vitamin D that we absorb goes to the fat cells. And it gets stored in the fat cells along with the other lipids, and then gets released from the fat cells to the other parts of the body, to the skin, to the liver, to the kidneys, where it gets transformed. So we've got to understand the metabolism. 
So you can be taking all those vitamin D3 pills in the morning or vitamin D pills in the morning and you're not absorbing them, you're pooping them out if they're not being absorbed in that biomass cell along with fat. So take your vitamin D with fat. Now, have your doctor or have me check your vitamin D levels. And for a normal vitamin D level, my normal range is 40 to 80. <coughs> Excuse me. If you look at the tables, they want that to be above 30. Ideally, I want that 40 to 80. Under 40, if you're between 30 and 40, go out in the sunshine. If it's winter time, maybe supplement through the winter and supplement for the four to six months of the, of the winter wherever you're living, and then don't supplement in the sun with vitamin D, but get out in the sun in the summer. So that's kind of a good way of thinking. Um, however, uh, if you are below 30, then in my opinion, you definitely need to supplement with vitamin D as a supplementation. And especially if you're insulin resistant, you still need to supplement. And I, the supplementation uh, recommendation that I have for, for otherwise healthy people who may be insulin resistant. Now, that's a conflict of interest because you can't be healthy and insulin resistant. But if you are insulin resistant, you're looking at about 5,000 international units of D3, preferably with K2. D3, K2 is a good combination in the cheapest pill format that you can find. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this, folks. You can buy it at any pharmacy. Insurance companies won't pay for it as a prescription. But you buy it over the counter, you take one of those a day. Some people take up to 10,000 a day. Some people take 50,000 once a week. Some of that overdose just gets pooped out. So my recommendation is 5,000 units per day through the winter months and maybe slightly less or none in the summer months if you're out in the sun. And you can always monitor that level. And I would urge you, if you are supplementing, um, to check those levels. So when I do blood work, I routinely check a vitamin D level. But why is vitamin D important? Because vitamin D regulates, together with other hormones like parathyroid hormone, regulates calcium and bone and tooth mineralization. So it regulates calcium deposition in the bones or calcium withdrawal from the bones. And that 40 to 80 range is a net neutral point where you're not over removing calcium from the bones and you're not over storing calcium. Okay. Now here's the interesting thing. Uh, I, a lot of people, my patients, more is better, more is better. My vitamin D levels are 115. They're 90. They're, I saw somebody the other day with a vitamin D level of over 300 with an upper limit of normal of being 80. And how did, I, how did I know to worry about their vitamin D? Because as I was looking at their blood work, one of the common bits of blood work we always do is we look at a calcium level. You can look at ionized calcium. I just look at, at uh, serum calcium to begin with as a screen. And ideally, I want my serum calcium to be not between 9.5 and 9.7. That's kind of where I like calcium to be. If it's high, if it's above 10, certainly if it's above 10.3, then I start worrying about parathyroid hormone pathway abnormalities, okay? Parathyroid hormone abnormalities, which can come from the brain, come from the parathyroid glands, or be a kidney, uh, a kidney problem. I'm not going to talk about that today. But it is not uncommon, first and foremost, for, for my patients to have a high level of calcium, 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, and also have a vitamin D level above 80. And then the cause of the hypercalcemia which can be dangerous, can be very dangerous, especially with a heart. And also with regards to atheroma, because remember it's factor two in the ev evolution of blood clots. So high calcium is not a good thing. And the commonest cause of high calcium in my practice is hypervitaminosis D. So you need to know those levels because some people are over supplemented and then we can scale back that supplementation. Either stop it for a few weeks or take it Monday, Thursday, or in the summer months, don't even take it. But beware of vitamin B being too high because it affects calcium excess and you're breaking your bones down excessively, typically to provide that calcium. Some calcium being absorbed from the gut, but the majority is coming from your bones and you don't want that. You don't want that osteopenia and that osteoporosis to happen. At the same time, if your vitamin, if your calcium levels are too low, if they're in the eight, uh, low, ni uh, 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 low nines, then maybe, look, you may be a little bit low on vitamin D. So look at that combination. 
Am I getting calcium in my diet? After the age of about 28, you're not going to add more to your bones. You're not going to add more calcium to your bones, but what you want to do is diminish the amount of calcium that is coming out of your bones to support your blood calcium level. You want that to come from your diet, dairy products being the healthiest, but there are other foods that can add calcium, some of those small fish as well. However, however, and eggs, by the way, are the most deficient of the healthy foods in terms of calcium and uh, because we don't eat the shell, typically. And the shell doesn't really get absorbed for those of you eating the shell. However, having said all of that, you've got to look at calcium and vitamin D, or your doctor should. Not just one, but look at the ratios. And those are so, so important. Because vitamin D is an essential, essential steroid hormone in the human body, regulated by insulin. As you become more insulin sensitive, you may not need as much vitamin D because it's being produced better in your body. But have an awareness. Don't just buy into sound bites on the, on the internet. Have your doctor look at your calcium, your serum calcium, or if it's really abnormal, your ionized calcium. Have them look at your vitamin D levels. And if your vitamin D levels are normal and your calcium is high, let them check your ionized parathyroid hormone. But this is what doctors are supposed to be doing. Most doctors don't understand the process I've just explained to you. Most of them just look at the numbers and say, here's a pill for you. Or they don't do the test because some insurance company told them, oh, you're doing too many tests. But regulating vitamin D because of insulin resistance is so important. And knowing what those numbers are is very, very important. And if you want to know what those numbers are and you want to know the impact on your body, set up a visit. I'd be happy to check out those numbers for you. Have to have you on board as a patient, but we can justify doing those numbers. I'm happy to go toe-to-toe with your insurance company. But give me a shout if you're interested. Uh, 561-517-0642. Text that number. You can WhatsApp that number. You can call and leave a message. But that is the entry into my practice for setting up a visit. Now, folks, I am pretty busy. I've got a lot of patients I'm ca- coming in. So be patient to see me or get on the uh, list of, of, of cancellation patients. Some, sometimes we have patients that can't come in or they cancel, it, cancel and we can get on the same day. But if you're interested in seeing me, 561-517-0642, that's what we do. Or take this information to your family doctor and say, hey guys, can you do an ionized calcium or can you do a serum calcium and can you check my vitamin D3 levels? Have them figure that out. And then we can talk some more. But please understand what is going on. Understand that low vitamin D levels are typically a sign of insulin resistance. And while you correct your vitamin D with medication, look at the root cause as well. Say, okay, my D levels are low. I need to go out in the sun a little bit more, which is wonderful for your head. But more importantly, can I reverse my insulin resistance? Because if my D levels are low, there are other parts of my body that are also going wonky and off. And if you want to optimize your health, optimize insulin sensitivity. And it will regulate all of these pathways. I am a carb addiction doc. I hope this helps. Leave comments down below. If you like what we're doing, you'll see in the show notes, we'll see our PayPal address. You'll see our Patreon address. Throw me a buck or two. Because that pays for James behind the camera. I don't benefit from this at all. It's a Sunday morning right now. I'm sitting here recording these videos. However, it's free from me but it does pay for the production. Till next time.